Hi there, welcome to this build of a 45 inch wingspan quiver. Now, the quiver is a, essentially a scaled down version of the late 1930s classic, the Quaker, or the, the Flying Quaker, or the Quaker Flash. And this quiver, the scaled down version, we're building from a great set of plans that we downloaded from the Outer Zone website. And if you have a look in the description below this video, there'll be a link where you can download the plans yourself for free. Now, up to this point, we've been working on the fuselage. We've laminated the sides, we've pulled them together, we've mounted the engine, and we've got that nose section uh, nicely finished off. Now, if you saw the last video, I said, right, we've got the fuselage done, and now we're going to move on to the wings and the tail plane and the fin and rudder. Well, maybe not. <laughs> I've, one of the things that's been kind of at the back of my mind and, and sort of um, not bugging me, but making me think about this build is that it's the only version of the Quaker that I've ever seen that hasn't got stringers. Now, there's a couple of other smaller versions than this of the Quaker, and there's uh, at least three different versions of the larger, uh, of the sort of full size, either 67 inch or 84 inch uh, Quaker, and they've all got stringers. This is the only one I've ever seen. And I kind of really like stringers, and I've been toying with the idea of whether I should put them on or not. The only thing that has been concerning me is that on the, the, the full size, the original Quaker, the stringers were 1 8 by 1 8. Now, if we make stringers 1 8 by 1 8 on this, they're going to look a little bit chunky and a little bit heavy. Really, they need to be 1 16 scaled down, so 1 16 would look really nice on this. And there needs to be two on the fuselage, one from just below the window coming down and another one midway in this section coming along and then two on the top. But my concern with this has always been if I do 116 stringers and I'm launching it and I hold it a bit clumsily or a bit of hanger rash and one of the stringers gets broke it's going to look a real mess through the tissue. Uh, and it might even be that I end up breaking one as I'm covering it, because 116 by 116 balsa doesn't have a great deal of strength in it. But, and there's always a but, I've come up with a cunning plan of how we can do the stringers and add just a little bit more strength. So, in this video, to cut a long story short, I'm going to be putting the stringers on and we're going to be making them, hopefully with a little bit more strength, the 116 square, but they will still look nice and delicate. Well, as I said, 116 is going to be really thin, 116 square, and even if it's 116 by 18, so it has an upstand off the side of 18 and they're 16 thick, they're still going to be quite delicate and possibly break. So, what I'm going to do is I've got this quite hard 116 sheet, and I'm going to be cutting some pieces round about 316 to a quarter of an inch wide, like this. And then, as you can see, I've cut some slots in there that correspond to the uprights on the fuselage side. So I'm just going to be putting this in place where it needs to go, marking where these uprights are, taking out the notches like that, and then gluing it into place. And that just slots on there, and what I'll do is I'll give an upstand off the fuselage of about one eighth of an inch. So we will have quite a nice profile of that being 116 with this one eighth upstand. And yet you'll have this extra balsa about one eighth inside the fuselage effectively, giving that extra strength. And that will be quite strong. And uh, once it's glued in place as well, it'll be even stronger once it's glued onto these struts. And I think that is a really good compromise. We'll get stronger stringers that look great and have that extra strength. 
you may see the extra depth through the tissue a little bit but it's not going to be something that really catches the eye so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some strips and we'll get these marked out and get these stringers in place and it's absolutely imperative when we're doing stringers that we get them nice and straight in the right place the last thing we want is wavy stringers it just it just won't look right so we need to eye them up uh, really well so I will cut this uh, this balsa now and we'll start to make these stringers right, well, the first thing we want to do is to mark on where we're going to put the stringers so it's not guesswork we've got an exact path and I've marked a straight line there which comes from the edge of the nose here where we're going to finish it taper it out straight along the side the fuselage it's then going to bend and it will kick up to the back like that and I've marked that along there hopefully you can see the pencil marks and the second stringer we're going to start just behind the window here and we're going to bring that to the rear of the fuselage so we've got the two lines on each of these uprights so we know exactly where this uh, this string is going to go and if we mark the front edge first and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of tape just to hold this stringer in place uh, the last thing we want to be doing is messing about moving the stringer while we try and measure it and as we only have two hands it'll be useful to use a little bit of tape there we go and we can hold this back edge like this and now we just need so we've got the line that we put on is on the bottom of this piece of balsa and we're just going to mark those now there we go these diagonal ones may need a little bit of adjustment to make them fit right this is the dip most difficult bit in a way where we've got the diagonals but because we've got the diagonals it means the gaps are smaller compared to here so if we make these slots a little bit bigger just to make them fit I don't think it'll make a great deal of difference right now we've got that coming through to there so we need to then kick this up and hopefully we'll keep that lined up with that one there so that's lined up at the back end and we'll put our tape on again just to hold it and I mean at the end of the day if we do it wrong we just do a second one it's going to be a bit fiddly um, but you know we're only talking of small pieces of balsa here if we get it wrong but obviously better if we can get it right first time almost there just the last couple to do it's a big help having that tape to hold that end because otherwise it would be swinging all all over the place and uh, being really irritating right so now we need to cut out those notches and what I'm going to do rather than just cutting them um, and hoping I get them all the same depth I've got a piece of balsa here which I think is about an eighth of an inch um, yeah it is it's an eighth of an inch and I'm just going to place that as a measure and draw along the top so now I know that we're getting these all of a consistent depth and then I'll go along with my scalpel and just just cut them out and slice them across right I've just fitted this uh, this stringer now having cut those slots out and it seems to be fairly straight it needs minor adjustment when I glue it just to make sure it's dead in line but if I turn that round to the camera you can see oops, you can see how how that is looking and we've got it lovely and straight or well relatively straight down this back edge like I say it'll need a little bit of adjustment when it comes to uh, to finally gluing it on but I think that's looking pretty good and at the moment that's lifted off there 
but we'll pull that down and we'll just sand that in to fit and I think that will look really nice. So what I'm going to do now is make up the other stringers and I think I will probably make them all up, label them so I know where they fit and then stick them on because it's if I'm putting it on the bench like this and I've got a stringer underneath it's going to damage it so it's probably better to do them uh, to glue them all in at the same time. Now I noticed looking at the plans for the original Quaker it also had a stringer along the bottom here which I think I'm going to leave off. I think I'm just going to do the sides and the top and I think that will make it look lovely. So I will get on and do the rest of these now and we'll have a look when we've got them done. Right now I've got the stringers done on uh, both sides and the top so that's six stringers. The, um, as I said earlier the ones with the diagonals are a little bit fiddlier but the, uh, the ones without the diagonals, the top and the sides, they're, they're a lot easier. But you can see I've got them done, they're a little bit loose at the moment, they need lining up now and gluing in place. I haven't put the, the two on the left, back on the left side, they were the very first two I did. What I'm going to do is I'll get these glued in place first and then I'll probably just put that on a towel or something nice and soft while I, uh, I do the ones on the other side. And as I said, it's really important to line these up and to get these really nice and straight and we'll get this nice bend here uh, kicked in so it's, it looks good. And I'll, I'll use a ruler to line them up but I'll, I'm also going to use my eye. To be honest, I think I prefer using my eye. But uh, I'm I'm just going to glue these with a, a dab of CA, so I'll just hold them in place, CA them and do each one individually, uh, each join, just check it and then glue it. The, um, the lead-ins here, or the lead-outs, I guess that's a lead-in, it's the front, I'm just going to hold that down and I'll glue that in place and then I'll just sand that and profile it and, um, and I think that will look fine. The same here on this uh, Hopefully you can see what I'm pointing at. Hopefully there you can see how that will just curve down and, uh, and glue onto there and the same with that. With this top one, I think what I will probably do once I've got the, or these top two, once I've got these glued into place, I'll probably join these, the, the back of the wing comes to here. So I will probably put a a piece of balsa in between those and bring it up to the height of the stringers so I can finish the covering material on there. I, I may even put a piece on here actually and um, just angle that down so it, it's uh, kind of a, a triangular piece that just um, again something for the covering material to go on to. So I will start to get these glued on and we'll have a look once it's done. Right, well, I've now got all of these stringers glued on and it's lovely and symmetrical and some great straight lines uh, well I say straight lines except for this bottom one which obviously just kicks up to follow the tail up but you know what I think this has changed kind of an ordinary fuselage to a really great looking fuselage and I think it was such a good decision to do these stringers because I think it's given it real character and uh, and it's much more like a scale of the original as well. I've filled in between the stringers just on the top there and the back of the fuselage, sorry, the back of the wing, the trailing edge would just butt up against that. So that will be something quite good because it will hold the wing in a positive place. If I hadn't done these it could have perhaps slid back unless there was some kind of stop. I've profiled these in here and uh, this one there and it will probably take a little bit more sanding. I have sanded it but I'll leave the final sanding until right at the very end just before I'm about to cover it. And I've, I've taken these in a little bit, just sanded those but I'll wait until I'm doing the tail and see how that fits. And I haven't touched the ones on top here because again until I get the, uh, the tail done I won't know what is the best thing to do about that. But anyway, I am so excited to have, uh, to have done these stringers. And I said I wasn't going to do the one on the bottom, which I haven't done. 
but I am very tempted to do it and think I probably will but it will probably be the last thing I do before covering because at the moment it sits quite comfortably on the bench and I'm going to be put, installing the radio gear and various other things I've still got some strengthening gussets and things to go around the, the cabin and if I put the stringer on it will be rocking backwards and forwards and it could well get damaged so the last thing I do but having seen these I don't think I can help myself and we always have to be mindful of the weight we're adding to a fuselage particularly on these small planes but I think we've added just a, a minuscule amount of weight to this, uh, this fuselage and I don't think it will really make a jot of difference so anyway, I'm really pleased I've done it and I hope you think it was a good idea as well. So I'm going to draw this video to a close now and in the next video we'll be definitely moving on to starting something to do with the wings. We might start laminating the wing tips I guess because we are going to make those, uh, like I said right in the very first video, we are going to laminate those rather than using reed. But anyway, Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting and useful. Please come back and see how we get on in the build of this 45-inch wingspan quiver.